Do you know the different types of bricks used in construction and their unique properties? Today, we are embarking on a journey through the world of bricks, an integral part of architectural design and construction. We'll explore the variety of bricks, their unique properties, grading, and typical sizes. We'll delve into brick coursing, discuss different types of brick joints, and examine brick construction techniques. We'll also address issues like efflorescence and provide insight on brick cleaning and restoration. Let's dive into the fascinating world of bricks. Bricks come in all shapes and sizes, but do you know about their types and grading? Let's dive into the diverse world of bricks and explore their nuances. A brick is an age-old, reliable building material made from clay or shale and fired in a kiln. Facing brick is all about aesthetics. It's used in exterior walls and other visible areas, offering both durability and a pleasing appearance. Then we have the building brick or common brick, a workhorse of sorts which is not as attractive as the facing brick and is made without regard for color or special finish. Lastly, there's the hollow brick, which is about one-third the weight of a solid brick. It's used in both load-bearing and non-load-bearing walls, and its hollow nature allows for reinforcement and insulation. Now let's talk about brick grading. These are based on the brick's resistance to weathering and are grouped into three categories. Severe weathering, SW, moderate weathering, MW, and negligible weathering, NW. The severe weathering bricks are suitable for areas with harsh weather conditions, while the moderate weathering bricks are used in regions with less severe weather. The negligible weathering bricks are ideal for indoor use or in mild climates. And what about the standard size of a manufactured brick? Well, it's typically 3 and 5 eighths inches thick, 2 and a quarter inches high, and 7 and 5 eighths inches long. Add in a typical mortar joint of 3 eighths of an inch, and you have a modular total size of 4 inches by 8 inches. Understanding the types and grading of bricks can significantly impact your architectural design and choice. From the common or building bricks for structural purposes to the aesthetically pleasing facing bricks for exteriors, each type has its unique place in the world of architecture. And with the knowledge of brick grading, you can make informed choices based on the climate and the brick's resistance to weathering. Ever pondered how bricks beautifully arrange themselves to form intricate patterns? That's typically done through the idea of brick coursing. Visualize a continuous horizontal arrangement of bricks or stones within a wall. This is what we refer to as a course. Every course is set following a specific design, known as a bond pattern, which not only enhances the visual appeal, but also fortifies the structural strength of the wall. Now, envision a wall constituted of several layers of bricks. Each continuous vertical section, spanning the entire thickness of the wall, is denoted as a withe. The thickness of a wall can be interpreted in terms of the count of withes it comprises. But how could we infuse a touch of visual charm to a brick wall? Welcome to the realm of belt courses, string courses, and sill courses. A belt course, alternatively known as a string course, is a continuous row or layer of bricks embedded in the wall, often utilized to regulate the height of the structure. A sill course, conversely, is a specialized variety of string or belt course that's positioned at the window's sill level. These courses inject visual delineation to a brick wall and are imperative terms you'll need to comprehend in the context of brick coursing and design. By mastering these terminologies and the concepts they stand for, you're well on your journey to crafting visually mesmerizing and structurally robust brick walls. Just as bricks are important, so are the joints that hold them together. In the world of brickwork, joints are the elements that bind the bricks together and give the structure its resilience. Additionally, Tooling is the process used to shape, compact, and finish the surface of the mortar joint, enhancing its appearance and durability. When we talk about types of mortar joints, there's quite a variety to choose from. Concave, V, raked, trowel struck, weather struck, flush, beaded, and extruded. Each has its specific purpose and aesthetic appeal. But for exterior use, concave, flush, and V joints are the top picks because they shed water more efficiently reducing the risk of water seeping into the brickwork. Now let's delve a little deeper into the types of joints. The construction joint, also known as a cold joint, isolates the masonry from through wall elements, such as doors and windows. Then we have the expansion joint, designed to accommodate the expansion and contraction of the brickwork due to temperature changes. And finally, the through building expansion joint, which, as the name suggests, extends through the entire building. Spacing of these joints is crucial for the stability of a structure. Major through-building expansion joints are usually spaced every 100 to 150 feet in large buildings. 
Expansion and control joints on the other hand, are spaced about every 15 to 25 feet and at places where the wall changes direction, height, and thickness. With the right joints, you can ensure the longevity and stability of your brick structures. Brick construction isn't just about laying bricks, it involves a lot more. Consider the single wide wall. A single layer of bricks held together by mortar forms the entire wall. These simple brick walls should not exceed 20 to 1 as it pertains to the maximum ratio of unsupported height or length to thickness. Then we have the cavity wall. Two wides of brick separated by an airspace or cavity tied together with galvanized metal wall ties or continuous horizontal reinforcement place 16 inches on center. This design reduces heat transfer and prevents moisture from moving through the wall. Now let's delve into the reinforced grouted wall. This is a two-wide wall where vertical and horizontal reinforcing bars are added. The cavity within is then completely filled with grout. This reinforcement and grout filling enhances the wall's lateral resistance, making it more resilient against natural forces. Moving on to the veneer wall. Here, a single layer of brick is used as a facade over a different type of wall structure, usually made of wood or metal studs. This provides the aesthetic appeal of brick, without the structural reliance on it. Now let's talk about wash and reglet. A wash is a slope on the top of a wall that directs water away from the wall surface. A reglet is a preformed metal shape that is cast into a concrete wall and set flush with the wall to allow the insertion of the edge of flashing and a sealant. Weep holes, another crucial element of brick construction, should be positioned 24 inches on center horizontally. These allow any moisture that has entered the wall to escape. Lastly, remember the rule of thumb for chimneys. The top of a chimney must be at least 2 feet higher than any point of the structure within a radius of 10 feet. With these techniques, you can create a variety of brick structures. Openings in brick structures are more than just gaps, they are carefully designed and constructed. When we look at a brick building, openings for doors, windows, and other features are made possible by the use of steel lintels, arches, reinforced concrete beams, or fully grouted and reinforced concrete unit masonry bond beams. Steel lintels are the most common choice for creating these openings. They are strong, durable, and able to support the weight of the brickwork above the opening. However, the choice of opening type isn't just a matter of practicality. It also depends heavily on the architectural design, the load requirements of the building, and aesthetic preferences. For example, arches might be chosen for their classic, timeless appeal while reinforced concrete beams might be used for larger openings or in more modern designs. Understanding how openings are made can help you design more functional and aesthetically pleasing brick structures. With this knowledge, you can create brick buildings that are not only solid and durable, but also beautifully designed. Ever noticed a white powdery substance on bricks? That's efflorescence. It's a crystalline deposit of salts that can form when water is present in or on brick, concrete, stone, stucco, or other building surfaces. It has a white or grayish tint and consists of salt deposits left behind when water evaporates. In addition, efflorescence can appear as a powdery substance on floors and walls or as a crystalline deposit on concrete surfaces. But don't worry, with proper construction techniques and materials, efflorescence can be prevented. Efflorescence can be an eyesore, but with the right preventive measures, you can keep it at bay. Maintaining the beauty of brick structures requires some cleaning and restoration. Let's start with tuck pointing and repointing. Both are methods of renewing the pointing, which is the external part of mortar joints in masonry construction. In tuck pointing, you'll remove the existing mortar to a certain depth and then fill in with new mortar. Repointing, on the other hand, involves replacing the outermost part of mortar joint with the aim of halting the destructive process of decay in the mortar. Now, onto the cleaning. The method you choose depends on several factors. First, consider the nature of the soiling. Is it surface dirt or something more stubborn like moss or algae? Next, think about how deep of a clean you want. A gentle scrub may be all you need for a light dusting, but tougher stains might require a more rigorous approach. A high-pressure water wash is very effective at cleaning brick walls. However, it can also wash away mortar and create swirl marks across the surface of the wall. Lastly, consider the type of brick. Some are more delicate than others and require a gentler touch. Methods for cleaning brick include high-pressure water washing, hand scrubbing with a brush and water, and chemical treatments like acid solutions. But remember, always test your cleaning method on a small, inconspicuous area first. This will ensure you choose the best method for your specific situation without risking damage to the entire structure. 
With proper cleaning and restoration, your brick structures can maintain their charm for years. Bricks are more than just building blocks, they are a design tool in architects' toolboxes. From the diverse types of bricks to the nuances of brick coursing and jointing, each element contributes to the overall design and functionality. The understanding of brick construction and the prevention of efflorescence are vital for any architectural project. And remember, the cleaning and restoration of bricks require a careful approach to preserve their integrity. So next time you design a brick structure, you'll be more in the know.